what's going on okay next day here we're actually going to be taking nasty red here all the way out to where i actually picked up my grandfather's truck in richland county ohio and we're going to be picking up my grandfather's prized possession his alice chalmers wd-45 and we're going to be bringing it back home here this weekend to get started on that thing to get it running flawlessly again it's it runs now i got it running the carburetor was just full of crap like it had like orange like rusty water and old fuel and crap in the bottom of it because it sat all winter so it, it it ran enough um but it didn't run great we're gonna get it back start working on that thing making sure it's mechanically sound that's the goal is to go pick that thing up here with the nasty red super excited i finally got this thing emptied it had so much crap in it here i mean it was just full of stuff so um, for those of you who for those of you who didn't see it new dash top okay dash had a couple hair cracks in it so we got that swapped out got the baby seat all buckled in got our straps more straps over there and this is going to be our first like family trip in the nasty red i'm pretty excited about it now we usually put them in the middle there and in these trucks where the seats don't really uh move much we get in and we actually put them in his seat from over the top because uh, it's kind of hard to get up in there you know even with the seat folded forward and especially when you have luggage and stuff on either side of him like you have a suitcase sitting on the seat and a suitcase behind the seat it's kind of hard to take everything out and get in there get a minute out so and he, and he likes it he likes crawling over the top once we're done driving so that's kind of fun we got the dual santa claus charging station because the wife always needs her phone charged but she doesn't plug it in at night so she always needs her phone charged and i like to keep mine plugged in because i always have the gps going on my phone here's the setup the family setup i got a couple of basic tools in the door over there some 10 millimeter wrenches to adjust you know the fuel um the idle um got our block strapped down on the thing set when we go to load it up this time we have a block to put under the rear that way the trailer fenders don't completely bottom out on the tires again like when you put a load on it so that's normally what i do i just didn't have my block the last couple times but we've got our block airbags are all good to go aired up i'm excited i'm excited oh there's something i was going to show you guys that i totally forgot nasty red had until i was in the back seat putting my son's car seat in there and i was like man i wish this back window open i'm like why is it i'm like wait a minute i don't see any latches but i do see that it has sliding capability it's a freaking it's a freaking power window here let me turn the key on it's a it's a power window how cool is that so i mean i totally forgot i was always wondering i'm like what is this freaking switch here and like what's the purpose of it so that's really cool i don't know why totally forgot about that but i did power back window that's sweet and in terms of a family vehicle nasty red although it does not have rear folding doors which is like oh man like my my most desirable thing in second gen it does have amazing heat amazing ac cruise works acceleration deceleration buttons work i mean everything works in the truck which is just so hard to find and everything works great which is awesome everything except for the radio everything mechanically that you need to drive the truck works radio is shot but it's always kind of been spotty like in and out working and now it just doesn't work at all and then um what was i going to say i had another thing i was going to mention but in terms of the extended cap doors as a family vehicle and whatever we do have my grandfather's truck now so we're going to be using that obviously quite a bit once we get that all redone six to eight months out of the year we can drive that truck as long as there's no salt on the roads and so that's going to be nice as well too and i told reagan you know some people are like oh don't drive it don't drive it you know like keep the miles off it you know take care of it don't drive it and i'm like okay here's the thing you do you okay you do you if it's you know our truck i told reagan i said I don't care if the engine goes out at 400,000 miles and we had to put a new engine in it for a few thousand bucks. Like, I'm gonna drive the truck, we're gonna enjoy the truck, and if it needs stuff, we'll fix it, but we're not gonna shy away from driving it because we're worried about using it and wearing it down. And it's like, it's a, first off, it's a truck, we're gonna take care of it. So like, if it needs a new engine, if it needs a new transmission down the road or whatever, then we just, we put a new one in it. You know what I mean? But we'll still have the truck and it's, and we're gonna use it, you know? Because of course, my most important thing about having that truck is that we can drive it. I like driving that truck and knowing that that was his truck and the truck that I got him as a gift. Every time I get in that truck, I think of the day that I bought him that truck and we were sitting in it when we got it back to the house and he was tearing up about how nobody's ever gotten him a gift like that before and just, he doesn't know, you know, why I did it. He's like, it's just, nobody's ever done that for me. And it was just kind of one of those things where it was like, 
that's why I'm attached to it. I just, I'm really attached to it for that reason. And I've never been too sentimentally attached to any vehicle, but I finally have one that I'm like, this is one I'm going to keep forever. And I'm very, very sentimentally attached to that truck. I had no idea how attached I was gonna to be to it until more recently, but I am. And no matter what, whether, like I said, it needs a new engine down the road, a new transmission down the road, even though everything works perfect now, runs amazing. If it ever needs it, you know, it'll get replaced and we're gonna keep on driving it. And on the topic of Nasty Red, like I said, guys, in a couple of videos ago, I'm gonna to try to keep Nasty Red as long as I can, but you know, plans will change. We do already have this truck, this truck, for the most part, hardly gets driven because we've already got, you know, Nasty Red, third gen, this truck. I mean, we've got vehicles that we're driving. So even this truck hardly gets used and it runs perfectly fine. It has a tow package and everything as well. I'm gonna to try to keep Nasty Red a while longer. We'll see how it goes, but eventually, you know, we're gonna have some other financial goals we're trying to address one after another. And so that's taking most of our focus is trying to hit all those goals. But not too long from now, I don't know when it's gonna be, but we're gonna get like a, a really nice pickup truck. That's a diesel that, you know, we can use for longer distance trips, family trips, stuff like that. And also be able to use it to haul and tow. So at some point we won't need Nasty Red anymore. And I know what people are going to say, you know, oh, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. But I already told you guys, like I said, when I bought Nasty Red back, I said, I'm going to try to keep it a little while, but inevitably at some point it will be a giveaway truck. You know, I don't know when that's going to be, uh, but at some point it probably will be a giveaway truck just because kind of like Rosine, she doesn't get driven a lot. She gets driven kind of like as a fun vehicle occasionally. Um, and then we're going to have my grandpa's truck and it's going to get fully restored here soon and airbags under the rear and stuff. And although it's a gasser, 99% of the time when we're towing, we can totally use that. We've just had a little more recently just due to some other things. We will not be short on trucks between Rosine, this truck, and then the newer pickup truck that we pick up as a family vehicle, which will be super comfortable, super nice, plenty more than capable to haul everything we haul now in heavier stuff and everything else. It's going to be a heavy duty newer diesel pickup truck. I just don't know if we want my grandpa's truck, Rosine and Asteroid sitting around if we have a newer truck for any time we need to tow something. So I hope you guys can see what I'm going at here. At a certain point, you're gonna have to cut some losses with certain vehicles and just and move on. Certain ones, obviously not, but others, you gotta, you gotta do what's the smartest and makes the most sense. And if, if we don't have storage and they're sitting outside, it's not doing them much justice when somebody else could actually be using it. You know what I mean? Two and two together from the last video. I said I promised my grandpa I'd get his tractor running good again. So uh, we got it picked up. You want to show him, Reagan? You already saw it get loaded up, but um, it's on the trailer. We are on our way back to the Fort Wayne area. The fort. We're heading back to, back to the fort, and um, I'm excited to get this thing off of here. Not excited to figure out how I'm going to get her off of here because we just pulled it on, but this bush hog kind of does like whatever it wants. 
So backing up might be a complete pain in the butt, but we'll figure it out. We'll get it all figured out. It'll be good. And it's got the forbidden caramel dripping out onto the deck of the trailer. And I'm hoping that it's just really, really old differential fluid that just looks horrible and that it's not like milky stuff from like a head gasket failure or something. I don't know. We'll inspect it more later. That runs totally fine though, but who knows? If it had a head gasket failure, my grandpa would have probably just kept driving it like that and said, ah, oh, man, if she fires driver, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, that's just kind of how he was. Uh, but, uh, Fluids, I could definitely see the rear end fluid not being changed out like ever. I could definitely see that being a problem. I actually asked him one time, the last time we were out there together, I said, when's the last time you did all fluid service on this truck? Like differential, oil, everything. He said, you should probably stop asking those questions. <laughs> and I said, okay then, which means probably never. And, um, but we'll get that all taken care of. We'll get everything changed out and we'll try to diagnose some things and figure out what's wrong with it. But. There's definitely a major fluid leak, and it's very, very milky looking, so we'll see. Last night was chaotic, crazy, just crazy. Um, I'm going to go over some things. We got the Alice Chalmers WD-45 here, and we're going to go over some things, some minor things that I noticed at first here. We're not going to be working on the tractor today because I got a lot of diagnosing to do on this and looking around on it. But I wanna show you guys a couple of things and tell you a couple of things. So we've got the tractor here, of course, and um, it's got some major leaks, as you can see on the trailer here. The Bush Hog, however, we had one heck of a time getting this on this trailer because it doesn't actually fit. And uh, I'm just hoping that the rear end here of my trailer is not completely trashed. The Bush Hog, we essentially had to just have three guys lift the back end while I tried to inch the tractor forward and then basically just set it down on the deck of the trailer back here and then strap it down because the tires are wider than the trailer. On this side, it's hardly touching. And then on this side over here, it's just hardly touching too. So there wasn't really much to fit on the trailer there. So that sucks. Tractor's leaking something here. Um, that does not look too pleasant. It looks very milky and not good. So I'm trying to figure out what the cause of that is. And I'm trying to figure out where it's coming from first so I don't get overly concerned if it's actually not, you know, like head gasket or something like coolant and oil mixing or whatever. But it looks like it's coming out of right here the most. And that is just where the gear is that runs from, you know, runs your PTO. So I'm hoping that it's just like really old, nasty, like differential fluid and stuff and gear fluid that just like has not been changed in a long time and that's what looks so gross and hoping that it's not actually like you know something from the engine that is mixing and not looking so hot but this is the engine oil pan and this is where there's a lot of gear oil through here i believe i could be wrong i believe though and that's where it's coming out of is through over here it just anywhere that you know the gears are moving there's little seals it's just kind of like that's just kind of it's been doing that as long as i can remember and he always is like well if it's still leaking it's still got some fluid in it so cool <laughs> so that's kind of the way it always was we're gonna have to do some fluid changing for sure tires are oh, like out of air and in the front um there's almost no air in those tires how we're gonna get this off the trailer i don't know it's gonna be a pain because there is definitely gonna be an issue with that and then nasty red this was fun look at that now my hopes are that that just kind of wipes off but that was a lot of fun so last night coming back here it was about 8 30 at night when it started raining last night it was pouring rain horribly i mean traffic there was tons of construction we're going 60 miles an hour tons of construction people riding my rear end and I mean, it was just, it was rough, you know, babies screaming and crying because, you know, he's waking up because of all the bumps we're hitting with the truck. And then you feel it in the truck and then you feel him again when you hit it with the trailer. So it was just rough. And then, so he was cranky, it was pouring rain, tons of construction. And then we're going down the road and I'm like keeping two hands on the wheel, just trying to focus just to stay on the road because there's like cones right down the middle line dividing the highway. And so you're like, I'm like hardly riding like on the shoulder here, you know, and just, you know, it, it, it probably had more room than I thought it did. But in my mind, with all the pouring rain, it was pitch black out. I'm thinking, this sucks. I can hardly see 
the lines. I got cones right here that are almost all the way into this other lane. I'm hardly on the road here trying to keep up with traffic. And then a cone blows over, horrible wind too, blows over and then starts to just roll right out into the middle of the lane. And what can I do? I've got a truck, I've got a tractor on a trailer. Like I can't like swerve around it into the grass and miss it. I'm going 60 miles an hour. It's dark, it's raining, you know? So it was like, what do I do? So it started to roll more and more across the little bit of lane that I had. So I tried to miss it as much as I could. And I tried to almost graze the standing big barrel cones. I tried to stay as close as I could to that one as this one's like rolling across the road, almost making it out of the way to the passenger side, but we couldn't miss it. There was nothing we could do about it. So essentially that cone's like rolling across and then the front of the cone just kind of is like facing in still. And I had about from this plow mount here, just to the outer edge of this tire between the other cones and where the front of this cone was that had rolled out into the road. And so I just completely smoked it. And luckily it didn't like damage the bumper, the front end anywhere. It didn't damage anything underneath up front, but I just basically steamrolled it with this tire and then it kicked it up, smoked it across the side of the truck here, up through here. You can see it hit the, the bed here, which most of this looks like it should rub off. Like last night I wiped this off, like see that? Most of it looks like it's, like it'll just come right off, but it could have been really bad. It didn't do any mechanical damage to the truck. We were able to continue the next hour of the trip, totally fine, all coolant and oil pressure and trans temps and everything was just reading perfect still. So we were all okay, but it just, it was just not a fun night to say the least, but we did make it back and, uh, yeah, that was, that was fun. I'm gonna start this day off here with some WD-40. This was my grandfather's choice of lubricant for rusty things. And this was something that he had just got in this bush hog here, not too long, um, not too long ago, maybe a year, but he never really got to use it much. But um, this thing is just nasty, all these threads, so I'm gonna Hope that that helps. This is actually a pretty slick idea, assuming it works. So much easier with that WD-40. So if you can see, the tires are wider than the trailer. So I'm gonna hope that I can put just half the ramps hanging off the trailer on each side so at least half the tire can ride on the ramps, get it down, put it in gear, turn it off, narrow the ramps up, get on, start it, keep on going get off you know because i got to get the narrow front end on with two ramps close together so enjoy this this should be fun
So we were able to get it unloaded all by myself, which loading it up was terrible. And there was like four of us, but uh, yeah, here she is. I got the deck lowered back down once I got it moved over here. I've actually got to lift up the front end of this trailer. I got to raise this um, positioning up here a little bit so that the, you know, the front end of here, the hitch to the bush hog is raised up a little bit more so that way the front end doesn't scrape when you hit low spots and stuff but it's actually pretty neat this is a super neat bush hog i've never seen one of these before until i saw his and i thought this was actually one of the coolest things because it snakes around behind the tractor so wherever the tractor goes the bush hog kind of snakes around and follows versus you know a lot of people really like the newer bush hogs because you can lift them up off the ground completely with a three point and just you know just have the tractor tires on the ground if you're cruising down the road or whatever you don't have a bush hog snaking behind so i understand that why they you know all the new ones are the way they are but um you know when you're making turns and stuff in the woods those newer ones that are just hooked up to a three point and you have to raise and lower them with hydraulics they like smack like if you're not careful obviously you can smack them on trees and brush it's hard to get into tight spaces and windy trails and stuff because they'll just you know they'll just swing out and beat whatever the heck's on the side of the trail if you're not careful but i just think it was kind of neat and there's a lot of things that i'd like to do to this but the first things are going to be of course mechanically sound fluid stuff like that and then maybe mess with like getting a different exhaust setup on this thing i'd i'd like to do like a chrome stack what do you guys think like a chrome stack on it? i think it'd be really cool just of course also pressure wash the thing down get it degreased and cleaned i don't know if this thing's ever been cleaned in all the years i've known him to own it so there's just a lot of a lot of small things to get started on right away. Super excited about it and hopefully it all goes smooth. We get some good progress on it. And hopefully by this time next year, this thing will be restored and done completely. But of course I've got other projects we're working on at the same time. So this will just kind of be one that comes and goes. But Nasty Red did awesome. Although the pouring rain, the darkness, screaming child, hitting cones other than that the truck itself was a freaking trooper and just it, it really does do its job so so well and so it is going to be a truck that's hard to part ways with when we whenever we do end up doing that assuming that's what we do end up doing with it at some point but it's such an awesome truck to like for pulling and stuff but um yeah but yeah um just long term it's just not going to be the ideal family towing vehicle so it will eventually probably have to be replaced so just don't be, don't shed too many tears when that day happens but we'll get started on this here in a video coming up super soon probably the next video or so we'll get started on this thing we do have a lot of stuff going on though in terms of with other other things we've got going on and guys before i leave this video 20x entries are live for everybody for this last week of the giveaway last week to enter to win this 2003 59 cummins plus five thousand dollars cash the truck's only got eighty four thousand miles on it it's a bone stock 59 other than the exhaust it's a beaut but if you want to get entered it's so simple just go to our store lmpgear.com you could buy a hat like this shirt like this or anything else in the store and get 20 times entries towards winning this truck right now plus five grand so get over there do that while you can if you want to sign up for a monthly mystery box there's a perk 20x entries for every giveaway for life as long as you stay subscribed to that you will always get 20 times entries towards winning our current truck plus five grand and it'll always be in your favor so thank you guys so much for all the love and support get entered while you can last week to enter 20x entries for everybody on the store thanks so much i'll catch you in the next video peace